Hi, this is a continuation of our discussion on shortness of breath. We will discuss shortness of breath in the elderly on this video and the next video. Shortness of breath in the elderly is common. The primary causes are heart failure and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD. Heart failure is a result of the heart being unable to maintain sufficient output to meet the needs of the body. As the population becomes older, the incidence of heart failure has become greater. Heart failure presents with increasing shortness of breath, fatigue, particularly fatigue upon exertion, paroxysmal nocturnal shortness of breath, which is attacks of severe shortness of breath and coughing that generally occur at night, and it usually awakens the person from sleep. Orthopnea, which is shortness of breath that occurs when lying flat, causing the person to have to sleep propped up in bed or sitting in a chair. And peripheral edema or swelling of the legs or ankles. The swelling is a pitting swelling. When pressure is applied to a swollen area, it may leave a pit in the skin. The physician will listen to the lungs with the stethoscope and hear breath sounds that indicate that there is an excess of fluid in the lungs. This is a result of fluid collecting in the numerous air sacs in the lung, making it difficult to breathe. Some of the investigated testing that a physician will order if heart failure is diagnosed are renal function tests, which are used to evaluate how well the kidneys are working, serum electrolytes, Serum is the part of the blood that doesn't contain cells. Sodium, potassium, and chloride levels, called serum electrolytes, can also be measured as part of a basic metabolic panel. A complete blood count, also called a CBC, is a blood test used to evaluate red and white blood cells, and it can be used to help detect a wide range of disorders, including anemia, infection, and leukemia. A chest x-ray. EKG, an electrocardiogram. This is used to gather information from 12 different areas of the heart. This non-invasive test can measure how fast the heart beats to how well its chambers conduct electrical energy. An EKG can detect a variation of a heart's rhythm. An echocardiogram may also be ordered. An echocardiogram, also called an echo, is a test that uses high-frequency sound waves, ultrasound, to make pictures of your heart. The test is also called echocardiography, or diagnostic cardiac ultrasound. Treatment for heart failure can be broken down into the following four categories patient education to ensure that the heart failure's progression can be halted, slowed down, or reversed. This would include measures to reduce weight, stop tobacco, stop alcohol, control diet, so to prevent or control diabetes, and control high blood pressure. Treatment of the underlying causes, which were also mentioned under discussion of education and prevention. Removing precipitating causes such as arrhythmias, electrolyte imbalances, anemia, alcohol consumption, tobacco consumption, and dietary causes. And also the possibility of non-compliance with treatment plans that have previously been put together for the patient. Non-pharmacological measures, such as managing the individual's activity rate in order to not aggravate symptoms. Again, weight reduction, particularly if the patient is obese. And drug treatment. Initial treatment therapy will usually start with a diuretic. A diuretic, sometimes called a water pill, treats a variety of conditions, such as high blood pressure, glaucoma, and edema. Diuretics help rid your body of salt and water. 
The result of a diuretic can be seen with the increased production of urine. The use of a diuretic will remove excess fluid that is built up in the lungs because of heart failure. As the fluid is removed, there should be an improvement in the patient's breathing. The physician may add additional medications to the treatment regime. Medications such as angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. Examples include Vasotec, Vestrel, Captatin. Angiotensin II receptor blockers. Examples of these are Cozar or Dioban. And beta blockers. This class of drugs not only slows your heart rate and reduces high blood pressure, but also limits or reverses some of the damage to your heart if you have systolic heart failure. Examples of these would be Coreg, Lopressor, or Zubeta. I think we will end our discussion of heart failure here. We will continue our discussion of shortness of breath in the elderly in the next video with a discussion of COPD or chronic obstructive airway disease. Well, I hope this helps. Have a good day.